Hi, I'm Chris Fitzgerald, and thanks for joining me for the Jazz Bass Technique Series. This installment is a spin-off on the series entitled Review Desk. Every once in a while, a new piece of bass equipment comes around, crosses my path, that I find really interesting, and I want to always get my hands on it and put it through its paces and see how it might actually work in the real world, in rehearsal, on a gig, and a recording, etc. And this series is set up for that express purpose. Uh, the two pieces of gear I'd like to talk about today are the Colstein Busetto Travel Bass and a preamp called the Vintage Revolution Acoustic Box 2. The Colstein Busetto Travel Bass is something I've had my eye on for a long time. I saw my first one at the ISB convention in 2017 in Ithaca and I sat down and played it for about 15 or 20 minutes and I thought this is actually a serious instrument. I didn't expect to like it um, but I actually liked it a whole lot. So. This year, obviously, it's near Christmas time, so as an early Christmas present to myself, I went ahead and bought one and I've been going through the honeymoon phase with it. Um, it is a removable neck travel instrument, so the neck comes off when it's time to fly, travels in a separate case from the body. The body travels as a suitcase, or a flight case, I should say, and the neck travels separately or can be attached also to the case that carries the body. I'll do a full technical review of this instrument for Bass Gear Magazine some point in the future, but in this installment, I just wanted you to actually hear the bass and hear it both acoustic and amplified and draw your own conclusions from the sound. The Vintage Revolution Acoustic Box 2 is a high fidelity preamp, which is on loan to me uh, for the purpose of doing a review. And again, later on in Bass Gear Magazine, I'll do a full review of this as well. Um, but basically, I'm gonna be using this in this installment uh, in conjunction with the normal setup that I use side by side so that you can actually hear them. Everything will be set flat on this, uh, on all the, all the amplifiers in this series. Well, for the purposes of comparison, uh, all of the new gear has to have something to be compared to, which is sort of the known norm. So in this case, uh, I'll just show you what those pieces of gear are. The bass is my uh, new standard La Scala hybrid. I've had it about 13 years now. I love it to death. It's what I take to every gig and every recording session. Um, it's a three-quarter bass with a, with a laminate back. It's strung with uh, Tomastic Dominant G, D, and A, and a Spirochore Stark E. These strings are really old. They're about seven years old. So they've already done all the mellowing that they're going to do. But that's the standard sound. When you hear this bass, that's the standard sound that I'm usually kind of going for in the sound that I'm coming out of. The normal preamp that I use is a Sansamp Paradriver DI. Um, I've been using this for about a year now. And I think it's a really nice unit. Um, it's nice and small, battery powered. I can set it flat and still get my sound. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's something that I've been using on gigs for quite a while now. And so it's the normal sound that, that uh, I normally get. This bass, that preamp, and the amp is a Phil Jones Super Flight Case combo amp. So what's gonna happen in this video is basically there are four separate clips um, of me playing Yardbird Suite um, twice on this bass and twice on the Colstein Busetto. Uh, in each of the clips, there's one mic on the bass, one mic on the amplifier. I'm trying to play more or less the same thing on each of the clips. Each one's about a minute and 45 seconds and rather than have me talk and talk and talk about what I think this bass sounds like or that bass sounds like or this preamp sounds like or that preamp sounds like, I'd rather just have you listen to them and draw your own conclusions about how they sound. One thing about the panning scheme of the video, in order for you to hear the bass by itself, the bass signal, just the acoustic signal into a microphone, and also hear the amplified signal coming out of the front of the amplifier, I think in the shot you can see the two microphones here. There's one set right in front of the bass, 
uh, and one set right in front of the amplifier. So when you're watching the video, if you pan hard left, so your left is going to be over here. If you pan to the left, you're hearing only the acoustic sound of the bass. If you pan to the right, you're hearing only the amplified sound uh, through whichever preamp it is that's being demoed at that time. And having said that, I'd like to just go ahead and play the clips, uh, listen to each one and see how you think it compares to the other, and I'll meet you on the other side.
we've had the chance to hear both basses and both preamps in all possible combinations, both soloed with the acoustic sound of the bass and through the amplifier. Uh, it's time to talk about what conclusions, if any, we may draw about these pieces of equipment. As I've said, I'm going to be uh, writing a technical reviews of both this bass and the acoustic box preamp at a later date for Bass Gear Magazine, and it will include all the technical specifications and all of that information. Here I just want to talk about my impressions. You probably have formed some of your own just by listening. I want to start with the bass. Um, I'm a big fan of this bass. Uh, as I said earlier in the video, I'm still in the honeymoon period with it. I've been practicing with it every day, played it in some rehearsals. It seems to hold its own fine. Um, some of the things I like about it. Um, I have played travel basses before. I've played the Eminence bass. I've played various stick basses. I even had a custom fretless electric bass built for international travel because I knew I could not take a full-size uh, double bass with me and so if I had to judge this bass against the La Scala it would really be no contest because the La Scala is probably my favorite bass in the world and it has the full body and the sound that comes with the full body of the bass uh, however that said um, my requirements for a bass when I'm on the road especially in another country are Basically, how does it feel to play? What kind of strings does it have on it? What kind of pickup does it have on it? Can I get a sound that I can work with? Is it a bass that I can be comfortable with? And by this measure, this bass is actually really amazing. So the La Scala has a 41.5 inch uh, string length. This bass has a 41 inch string, le string length. It is a full size fingerboard, full size neck. And so to play it, it feels almost exactly the same. The only difference is the strings. So on the La Scala, I used Tomastic Dominant on the top three. Those strings are notorious for breaking once you take them off and put them back on. Obviously, not a good option for a travel bass. So this bass is set up with Spiracore middles, uh, red silk on both ends, and they're brand new. So part of what you're hearing when you're hearing the two basses side by side, is you're hearing a very old and seasoned set of strings on the La Scala and a brand new set of spiral chords, which are still in the early sort of everything sounds like a banjo stage. So I expected this bass to sort of mellow with age as the strings mellow. However, what I was really surprised about with this bass is the way that the feel of the bass feels exactly like playing a regular three-quarter bass, and also the bass response of the strings. So if I play a stick bass or any number of other travel basses I've played, there's always this diminished bass response. So when you play a low note and you want it to growl, you, you go for the note and it's not really there. The body of the note is not really there. But on this bass, There's this weird combination of the feel of what it feels like to your hands to play a note and the sound that comes out that really defines the experience for the player. And I have to say that this bass is a wonderful bass to experience the feeling of playing with. Um, I expect that when these strings mellow a bit, it will be even better still. But it feels great to play it and I'm actually, instead of dreading going on the road and thinking, you know, what is the bass du jour wherever I'm going. I'm actually looking forward to, to traveling to play, you know, with a bass that is basically my own, with something that is, if not my regular voice, is a facet of my regular voice. So the true comparison is um, not between this bass and the La Scala, it's between this bass and whatever the bass du jour is where I'm going. And based on my long experience in these matters, this bass is a clear winner in every possible way. I can travel and know that I'm going to have a voice 
to play with when I get where I'm going. And that's amazing. In addition, and I'll include this in the later review after I've already flown with it a couple of times, um, it's really easy to take apart and put back together. It's very simple to get everything right where it should be. Um, the case has wheels. It's it's going to be a real treat, and I'm and I'm really looking forward to it. As far as the preamps go, this is a little bit tougher because you've heard both. Um, if you panned left and right while the various clips were going, you've heard both of the preamps, and I heard it said about the acoustic box that it was probably the best sounding preamp for piezo pickups and I would kind of have to agree with that it's got a really wonderful sound um, the reason that you would use a preamp in the first place with a pickup on a bass rather than just going straight into the amp is that uh, piezo pickups tend to have a sort of what has been described as a quack or a honk sound to them. Something in the lower mids that gives it this compressed sound, which most double basses find to be a little ugly. This box um, takes a lot of that out. The moment you plug in, it gives you a much more viable sound. And remember, this was being run completely flat. So if I had been tweaking uh, knobs and trying to get the sound absolutely perfect. I probably could have gotten it to sound a little better than it actually did. Um, but it, as you can see, it has a ton of options for shaping the sound, which none of which I used. I just wanted uh, the listener to hear the sound of the preamp itself. This box also has two inputs, one for a pickup and one for a second pickup or a microphone. So if you like to blend a pickup and a mic, this will do that for you and give you lots of control over both sounds. So on the plus side, it is probably the best sounding pure preamp I have heard for bass pickups. On the minus side, it's really big, kind of heavy, very well constructed. But if you compare it to what I've been using, it's about three times the size and easily three times the weight. In addition, it comes with a discrete power supply, which is great because you get clean power and less noise. Um, but the power supply itself is this big and also has to be carried in a little bag with it. And the power supply is almost the size of that preamp. So, if I had to pick a winner, I would have to pick two winners. Uh, one winner would be if I were uh, a touring double bassist who could take my own bass everywhere and play in halls with a sound man in front of house uh, support and basically have someone help me set up my sound everywhere I go and I'm really trying to get it perfect. This A-Box 2 would be the clear winner because it offers all sorts of sound shaping possibilities and basically I could get into any space and say okay it's got too much of this and not enough of this and I could actually smooth that out. Uh, for my reality of the basically the gigging bassist who plays all kinds of venues mostly local um, many without sound reinforcement the Sans Amp Paradriver which I've been using for a year um, is the winner for me because it's small, it's battery powered, it sounds really good, and I can just slip it in the pocket of my uh, bass bag and take it wherever I need to go. And I've got a lot of it's I got a lot of sound shaping I can do on this, not nearly as much as that, but enough to get me a decent sound wherever I go. Okay, well that's about it for this installment. Um, I will put links to the websites of all of the equipment tested in this particular installment so you can go check out pictures and sound clips and owner's manuals if you want uh, to find out more technical details. Remember, the Busetto and the A-Box will be reviewed in Bass Gear Magazine um, at a later date. Not quite sure when yet, but that will happen. They're next up on my list. 
And for the rest, I hope some of this has been of some use to someone, and see you next time.